Actors, Lisa here from Fun Stuff Crafts. So glad you could join me for another Inspiration Friday. So I am in my new craft room and I'm starting to do some of the crafts or ideas that I got inspiration from on Pinterest. I put together a whole Pinterest board on things I wanted to do in my craft room and I want to share some of those projects with you. So today, what I'm going to do is I am going to make a portable pressing pad. Now, I want you guys to know my inspiration, and I will post a picture of it so you guys can see it, was a pressing pad that was actually on an Alex unit. And I have an Alex unit on wheels right here next to my sewing machine. And what I want to do is put a pressing pad so as I'm sewing, I literally can be sewing, have my iron on, turn around and press. Now I definitely could use a portable ironing board, which you guys have probably seen in some of my videos before, but I thought it would be really fun to put together a uh, pressing pad that fit the size of this. The other fun thing is I have this right between my sewing machine and my serger is right here. So I can go back and forth and it's really handy. And then you know what you guys, I tuck it back away when I'm not using it and we're all good to go. So I am really excited about sharing this tutorial. And like I say, my inspiration came from Pinterest. I've got a whole board just that I put together on ideas I wanted to do with my new craft room. I can't wait to give you a tour of the whole craft room. There's just a couple things that we've still got to get done, this being one of them. So I am going to join you over at my craft table and we are going to start making this portable um, ironing pad. But before we get there, I've got to tell you guys thank you. Thanks so much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. And if you're new to my channel, make sure you click on the subscribe button. And if you click on the bell, YouTube will alert you each time I upload a new video. I try to do it every Friday. That's why we call it Inspiration Friday. So give me a second. I'll get my camera angle changed and I'll meet you at the craft table. So let's get started on making this portable pressing pad for my Alex unit. So what I want to show you is kind of what I decided to start out with. Now, you guys can go and get a piece of wood at like Home Depot or at um, Lowe's and they will definitely cut it for you if you need it to be cut. I actually just went out um, into our back shop and I found a scrap piece of particle board. So this is going to um, work real well. It's actually um, a leftover piece when we were building the new wall of my craft room. So um, what I did is I measured my Alex unit. Now my Alex unit is 19 inches by 26. So I wanted my board to be the exact same size and fit right on top of my Alex unit. So that's the first thing I needed to determine, okay? 26 by 19. So I, I cut this, and I've already done that, as you guys can see. I did take the sander around the edges just to smooth it a little bit. We're going to cover it with fabric, but I just thought it would be easier if I did that. So first thing is you need a piece of board, okay? Now, I've also seen people use like a, a heavy cardboard um, that they could do it with. I just thought um, wood would be a good idea. So that's what I started out with. Then what I did is I started looking through my scraps to see what type of batting I had on hand, okay? And so these are the two types of batting that I'm gonna be using. Now, you don't have to double layer it, but I just wanted to give it a good solid base and especially since I'm putting it on a board, okay? So this is batting that I've used in on a baby quilt before and I'm gonna make that be my first layer, okay? Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do 100% cotton batting, okay? And this is the 100% cotton natural batting and I'll put links to everything down below you guys that I've used. And then the next thing I did is I went and I picked up some of the heat resistant fabric. Now this is fabric you would normally see on an ironing board, okay? And to be perfectly honest with you guys, if you guys wanted to leave your pad with this on top, you absolutely could. But I wanted to add some more color to my craft room. 
And so I went up to our local quilt shop. Um, Annie's quilt shop is absolutely just got the cutest fabric up there. And I picked up this fabric and I will give you guys a close up of it, but it is so cute and it's got um, scissors on it, thread, and it really goes with the color that I'm doing here in my craft room. So that's going to be my top layer. One thing I would recommend you guys do, pick out a fabric you like to look at because if you're at your sewing machine a lot and you're pressing, you want to make sure you're using a fabric that you really like. Then the other thing that I decided I wanted to do is I stopped by the dollar store and I just picked up some of the shelf liner. And I'm going to put this on the bottom um, just to help protect my Alex unit and also so it won't slide really easy. Okay, so all different types of shelf units. Uh, or shelf liners. I just picked this up at the dollar store. Okay, so I have my batting, my fabric, and my shelf liner. Of course, I'm going to use my cutting mat. I'm going to use my trusty ruler. I'm going to use my rotary blade. I am going to use my staple gun. That's how we're going to attach everything together with the staple gun. And of course, I've got an extra pair of scissors because I'm not going to use my rotary blade on the shelf liner. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing you guys we want to do is we want to determine how much fabric we're going to need, okay? Now I like to be able to pull over the edges quite a bit, okay? Just to make sure it's nice and secure. So I decided to add 10 inches to my dimensions, okay? So I think I told you my Alex unit is 26 by 19, right? So I'm going to do my fabric 29 inches by 36 inches, okay? So that right there tells you guys that um, a, a yard of fabric is going to be more than enough um, for you to be able to um, do this project. So let's go ahead and start with our first layer and that is going to be this um, quilting um, um, batting that I picked up. Okay, And now just like we've done before, whenever I'm cutting, I'm using my rotary blade and so I'm going to layer it so I can cut it out a lot quicker. So I want to go 36 inches by 19 inches, excuse me, 36 inches by 29 inches, right? So I'm going to go ahead and I know that 18 plus 18 is 36, so that's going to be my first cut. So I'm going to go ahead and just fold this um, a couple times, okay? So I know that I've got 36, so let's just double check and make sure Lisa folded that right, okay? So I'm folded in half this way, okay? So I'm gonna press up, fold it together. <coughs> Excuse me, you guys. Okay, fold it in half. That way I know I have it doubled. And then I'm going to, I wanna cut it at the 18, but to make it easier for my cut, I'm just gonna fold it this way, okay? So I've got my fold on this side. I'm gonna take my trusty ruler and my rotary blade right at the 18, okay? So the 18 is right here, and this is pretty thick, so we'll see if I've got it maybe a little bit too thick, Lisa. It's coming apart. Couple runs. One more. Okay, so we've got our first cut. So I know I've got this at 36, right? Now what I need, so 36 is going this direction, okay? Now I need it to be 29 this way, okay? So 24, so 29, that would be 14 and a half, right? So 14 and a half, and we'll just make it a little bit thinner this time so I can cut it quicker, okay? So 14 and a half. Got my first layer cut, easy as that. Now, I will tell you guys, I'm using scrap material for um, or what I had left of this 100% um, um, cotton batting. And so I know I don't have the exact amount. I know it's bigger than my um, pad, so I'm good there. Um, but I'm not quite at my 36, so there's 24. Actually, I'm right at that. So I'm just going to leave this piece as it is. It's going to be a little bit short, but since it's the second layer, 
I'm going to be good with that. Okay? So now we've got that layer cut. Now we're going to take the um, heat resistant and we are going to cut 36 by 29 of it. Okay? So same method, you guys. I'm going to go ahead and I've got my fold right here. Okay? And that's at 18 right there. Get this all cut out, and I'll tell you guys, once we get it cut out, this is the most work you're going to have to do. Um, because we're just going to layer it together, staple it, and this is going to be a quick project. So, um, just bear with me as we get this, this all cut out. Some new blades. <laughs> okay, so that one's cut. So now we're going to cut our fabric and then we're going to layer this all together and we are going to have a pressing pad. So I'm really excited to see what this looks like when it's all done. Okay, so I already bought this at a 36 width. Okay, so all I need to do is cut it at Sorry, you guys. So there's my 36. Okay. So now I just need to cut it at the. Try to pull it again. Just need to cut it at the 14 and a half. Go the right direction, I said. That really helps. Okay. So we're going to do 14 and a half on this one. Is my fabric. The second layer is the um, heat resistant. Then I've got the cotton batting and then I've got my other batting. Okay, so now all we're going to do, you guys, is we're just going to layer these pieces in. And what I like to do is I like to maybe over a little bit, but I'm just going to pull these on 
And instead of doing them all together, I'm going to individually do um, each layer, okay? And so we're just going to very quickly do this. And you guys, this whole project comes together really quick. So I'm just going to do that first layer, okay? And then I'm, whoops, have I decided to go out of staples? No. All of a sudden my stapler's not working. That does not help matters. So let's just double check and see what's going on here. There we go. Okay. So just going to tuck them in. Now, I've seen some people do a lot of trimming here. Um, and you definitely can if you don't want the bulk. Um, but I just found that this works out really good. Good for me. Okay. Now, this layer was the layer, remember, that I used my remnant on. So I am only going to pull in the ends because I'm really short on the other one. And what I'm going to do is let the other fabric pull it tight. Okay? So now I am to my heat resistant fabric and I want to start to apply a little bit of pressure when I'm bringing my fabric in. If any of you guys have done upholstery before, this is a really common technique to do for the bottom of a chair. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull this all in. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm gonna fold my corners in and I kind of look at it as kind of like a package. I'm just bringing my package in um, like I'm gift wrapping, okay. Do my heat resistant and you guys we are just about there with this project I just can't wait to be able to use this um, and put it on top of fact, I actually got two Alex units in my craft room I could end up doing a second one of these just because I love the look at it, of it so much now as you guys saw earlier I cut this fabric wrong luckily it still has enough to come over the edges. So that first edge that I do, I am going to not pull it really tight. I just want to make sure that I get it stapled in there really well. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is this end, I'm going to pull a little bit tighter. Okay. Because this is going to be my top layer of fabric. So I want it to be pulled as tight as possible. Now, had I cut my fabric the right way, I would have had a lot more play in this. But, luckily, we're making it work, okay? So when you guys can really tell, I'm doing this all right on camera with you. <laughs> this was my, my first run at doing this big up one, and I definitely made a mistake, but guess what, we're making it work. Now, this last layer, I like to fold my piece over, make sure my edge is tucked in, and then pull this end really nice and tight, okay? And then I go ahead and fold in again, and I want to make sure that I'm nice and tight, okay? And I like to do the ends first, and then... Excuse me. About that, you guys. Good old phone going right in the middle of a video. Not good. Okay, so let's go one more time here on this side. Again, I've got that end folded in, you guys. So it is giving a nice, clean finish. Okay, so fold it in. You guys can see it on this side probably a little bit better. Okay, I'm gonna pull it nice and tight. Oh, you guys, this is turning out so good. I can't wait to flip it over and take an early peek at it. Just love this fabric. It's free spirit. is the maker of the fabric, and it's just absolutely beautiful. So before we put our last piece in, i got to show it to you upside down a little bit. Doesn't that just look beautiful? 
Okay, so now what we're going to do, you guys, is remember I bought that shelf liner. Now I've already cut the two pieces. These shelf liners that I picked up at the Dollar Tree only come in 12 inch sections. So I'm going to have to do two of them. But what the idea here is, I just want to cover the back of my pad and that way it's going to stop it from slipping around. Okay, so once again, my trusty staple gun is what I'm going to use. And you know, guys, you can make these different sizes. I've seen people um, talk about them being from traveling. So think about it if you um, have a trailer um, or you know a motorhome, and you travel and you like to do some crafts. Um, you could definitely put together a smaller version. Okay, just go and see if we're happy there. Okay, you guys, there we have it we have got our pressing mat all done. I can't wait to go put it over on my Alex unit and I'll make sure I show you a shot. So thanks so much for joining me for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on making my pressing pad to put on my Alex unit. This was such a fun Inspiration Friday project. If you did, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and click on the bell and YouTube should alert you each time I upload a new video. If you have any questions, please add a comment below. I love to hear from you. And also, don't forget to check out my blog at funstuffcrafts.com for other DIY projects.